Greetings, greetings, greetings to all. We are indeed thankful and grateful to God that we can be here tonight. Again, we can share with you what God would have us share with you. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, mental wellness. Um, one, of the, one of the issues that is prevalent, and I think it's something that we must deal with, and even as the church and even as a Christian body, we must be able to handle the issues of mental wellness. Today, I have with me, as you know, I'm Apostle uh, Mason. I have with me two guests with me, um, one, Miss Leah Gilbert, and she is a social worker student. And I have with me also Mr. Bradley Joseph, who is a social worker. Uh, today he's not really here in his capacity as a social <laughs> from his office, amen. But you know, today we just want to have a conversation. We want to just talk about mental wellness. Uh, how do we deal with it? How do we handle it? And places also that we can go to get help. So today we're just going to be having a discussion, and I want you just to bear with us today. It's going to be it's going to be good. I assure, I assure you, it's going to be good. It is going to be very informative. So you can just sit back. We always open up with a word of prayer. You know, everything, prayer is important in all things. So I'm thankful to God for this time. Father God Almighty, we thank you for this day, this hour, and this moment. Father, we pray that your will will be done. We pray, Lord, that your purpose will be established. Father, we know that there's nothing that is impossible with you. Father, those who are struggling, those who are dealing, Father, with mental illness, those who are family members who are dealing with mental illness, Father, we pray, God, that even as we share here tonight, that, Father, they will hear us. And, Father, we pray that the information tonight that is being given, Father, it will be helpful. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. What I'm going to do tonight, before I even begin to ask any questions, I want to just allow uh, Miss Gilbert to introduce herself and just to just to tell us who she is. Amen. Amen. So go ahead, Miss um, Gilbert. Well, my name is Leah Twyla Gilbert. Um, as Apostle mentioned, I am currently pursuing um, my bachelor's degree in social work. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur as well, and I'm also very active in ministry. Um, mental health is actually um, a topic that is actually very passionate that i'm passionate about um hence the reason why we are doing this topic tonight um and then i hand you over to my colleague which will give you an introduction mm -hmm. ahead, so my name is um bradley joseph i'm a social worker i work at the malayan heights medical complex um for the past few years i've been working with persons in addiction and um, mental illness as well I do have a passion for um, mental health. I think is it's a important aspect that we in society we tend to neglect. So I guess that's why we're here to inform. Yes. Absolutely, 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 man. So you've heard them again. This is Miss Gilbert and Mister Joseph. And so tonight we are talking about mental health and you express, you both have expressed what mental health really means to you both. And so, you know, I just want to ask this question, what is mental health and how can one deal with mental health? So what is mental health first and foremost? Just express to us, share with us, you know, either one, either one of you can answer. Well, yeah, well, so mental health, mental health is one's ability um, to basically deal with life challenges. I mean, mm -hmm. as human beings, we 
we encounter challenges on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, the ability to bounce back, you understand, or to develop a certain measure of mental resilience, as we call it, and in order to manage and cope with life struggles. Mm -hmm. That is, in a nutshell, what mental health mm -hmm. refers to. Okay. Now there's mental, mental illness. Mm -hmm. So the ability or the inability to manage stressful situations, you understand flow, and you have a number of um, factors that will cause that. For example, you have depression, suicide ideation, substance use. Mm -hmm. So these factors could make it difficult for an individual to bounce back or mm -hmm. to, de to develop that level of resiliency to deal and manage with stressful situations okay. and life challenges. Okay. So um, what impact what impact does mental health have on people? They're talking about both in church and also on the society at large. What 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 impact have you seen? I mean you've been, you know, doing operating in the hospital, doing stuff for quite some time. What impact does mental health have on the church and on people in general? Well, with okay, in terms of society, mm -hmm. including church as well, including the religious aspect, you have that um that stigma. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah. When it comes to mental health and even seeking um help. Um you know we refer to an individual as being mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that even 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 in the healthcare system as well, mm -hmm. um, you see the difference in terms of how um, sometimes persons who are there to provide the, the necessary service mm -hmm. they will treat persons with mental illness different. Mm -hmm. You have these um, connotations, you understand? Um, if you understand, mm -hmm. even, even the, the behavior would basically yeah. be be different as okay. opposed to someone someone coming for um treatment for um a mental health condition as opposed to someone coming for uh, a medical condition like mm -hmm. diabetes and so forth now um in church due to the um religious aspect you people people tend the first thing the the first intervention they seek is spiritual guidance yeah, yeah. that's the very first thing mm -hmm. you understand now um Persons tend to label mental illness as you, you having a demon, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. demon possession. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course, they're, they're different mm -hmm. realms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you understand. Yeah. So, in a sense, in terms of how it would affect it, it that would basically prevent persons from reaching out. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because they're afraid of the stigma, yeah. and our society would okay would label them would label them in in in, in turn. Okay. You so so then um. I said, and I know you just mentioned about the church, and it, mm -hmm. it can be demonized. And um, how how does how do you all know if something is demonic, mm -hmm. or something is a nat or is natural? Um, I mean, you're like, you've been around persons who have been treated and so forth. Mm -hmm. And what is the ratio in terms of dealing with persons who have? A mental condition and being healed from that mental condition because of stuff that they have given to them, mm -hmm. whether medicated or otherwise. Mm -hmm. What what's the ratio of healing and changes in the lives of people? Okay, it, it could be a, a mixture of well, it's a mixture of both in mm -hmm. because the church is a support system mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. not provide a a safe space for individuals to be able to express how mm -hmm. they feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand being able to to come come into church and worship God and fellowship as well. Yeah. In addition to basically receiving the necessary medication. Mm -hmm. You understand? To help stabilize their mood and to and to deal with the chemical imbalances and, and whatnot. Um you asked a question earlier in terms of the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So um the you have the psychiatrists and the um clinical counselors, they yeah. use a, a diagnostic criteria. So it's the DSM five. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? Yeah, how do you call it? The DSM the DSM5. Five. DSM five. Okay. Yeah. So it's a tool they use to basically look for um 
symptoms, mm-hmm. certain, mm-hmm. certain symptoms over a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. Okay. You understand? Now, um, with that, they would that would help provide a, a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the same way you go to the doctor, mm-hmm. the doctor realizes, okay, there are certain mm-hmm. symptoms. Okay, okay, well, these are symptoms mm-hmm. of diabetes and so forth. They're doing the necessary tests. Okay. So it's similar. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Now, with the the demon possession mm-hmm. aspect, I guess that's where you would come in. <laughs> 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 I guess that, I can only speak from, from my own experience, right. you understand? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's what that's what they, they use to um to determine one of whether or not someone has it. Okay. Uh, be, be, because mm-hmm. from from the spiritual aspect, I mean we we, we deal with people and as we read the many places in scripture where you see persons who have been demonized mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. mental condition. Right. And um, right, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and we also have in I think it's Mark chapter five. We have the young man who was demonized mm-hmm. for demon possession, mm-hmm. and he had a spirit of um, called Luna. And one of right. the things we've learned that is uh, the, um, mental condition, or what, what we also can call a schizophrenia too, mm-hmm. is one of the highest forms, one of the highest mm-hmm. forms of demonic possessions. Oh, and okay. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Be, be, because it, it takes a person out of character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it disrupts a person's life. Mm-hmm. And many persons don't know how to deal with individuals who are suffering a mm-hmm. uh, mental condition, be it demoni- demonic or whatever, however mm-hmm. we identify it. So you have, you have some times um, where a family may not know how to handle such a person. And so do you think do you also think that um mental illness is stigmatized yes definitely yeah definitely that, definitely that is something that people once people know that you have a mental condition that they run away from you yeah. definitely, definitely. And, um i guess that's where we come in, in terms of our profession because yeah. like you mentioned in terms of fam- families having difficulty mm-hmm. to to deal with an individual that's where we come into basically educate them. Yeah. okay you understand about the condition. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, we have what we call like a, a, a family meeting mm-hmm. with the psychiatrist and social worker, the counselor. Okay. You understand to educate the family mm-hmm. as to what that individual is experiencing, what they themselves can do. Mm-hmm. You understand to pro- to provide a, a therapeutic environment okay. for that individual, and it it helps. It does. It helps. It does. You understand because family support is a major major um aspect mm-hmm. you understand where, where when it comes to when it comes to providing therapy yeah you understand um sort of so we would educate the family about the medication okay you understand so at least you know what times they should give the medication mm-hmm. when they should give the, give the medication because like you mentioned it basically takes the individual out of character yeah and during that period you you wouldn't even have the capacity to remember to take that have a yeah, yeah. Medication. Medication. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why sure. the family support okay it's, it's important that's why in terms of educating the, the mm-hmm. public mm-hmm. you understand so what we're doing here is very important mm-hmm. okay in terms of helping them understand it. okay the before i go into a, any other question what what i want to ask also is how do you what means do you use in terms of educating the public where mental illness is concerned well we use these these, these same programs we Go, um, radio station, television, mm-hmm. social media, um, seminars. Okay. So um, we go to the schools as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the, community. start, the communities. The mm-hmm. communities. Yeah. In the sense, so you start young, you you go to the schools, mm-hmm. educate them more about um, mental illness, mental health, what what, what they can do. You understand? Um, we need to have the churches as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the churches, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. yeah. Y'all go to church. Y'all go to church too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Definitely. Is it something? Is it a program that is welcome within the churches? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Um, a bad experience. If we don't, yeah, it's welcome. Okay. And in in terms of, because you may find that one of the things I mean, sometimes you look at we we look at news and we see sometimes where the challenges of society with mental mental illness. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the society don't know how to deal with persons with mental illness. Oh, sure. So when when they are triggered, mm-hmm. you find you find that they are sometimes beaten, 
you find that there's sometimes uh, property. So how would you educate a society in terms of how to deal with a person who may have a violent condition uh, because something triggered? And how would you educate the society in terms of dealing with such a person? Should they approach the individual or should they call um, law enforcement or whoever to deal with such a person? But first of all, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, while, while, while doing my studies, I, I read a, a research and it indicated that um, persons who suffer with mental illness, they are at a higher risk of being and, um, okay. You and I, well, you and I may be walking down the road and see someone we, we assume that they are, they have an issue, mm -hmm. so would, 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 would be afraid of any that person might think. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But they are at a higher risk of being beaten, mm -hmm. you understand, by someone, well, Persons, persons who may not have a, a mental illness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we believe it is the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But based on that study, indicated that persons with mental illness often get beaten more. Often. And okay. that is that actually provokes them as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Be, uh, okay, yeah. because they're being beaten. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. But to but to answer your question, of course, we we are the authorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand? We 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 are the we are the authorities. So it's 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 simple as that. It's not a case where you try to you try to um, approach the individual or, or try to restrain them. So you call the authorities, and then usually what what the police would do, they would come, apprehend the individual, and take them to the to to the wellness center to receive treatment. Okay. Um. We we look at. And, and again, we're talking about we're talking about mental mental health, and we're talking about its impact. Um, can we can we just just simply speak about uh, common mental health conditions? Yeah, and can you just share some common mental health conditions and you know exploring these conditions such as um, we have. Conditions like anxiety, mm -hmm. we have depression, depression panic attacks. Uh, panic attacks. So, so can you can you just happen. share? Right. Because right. even in even in the church, because we we can look at it. That's why I say I believe in the holistic mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of people's lives, mm -hmm. and not just dealing not just dealing with the spiritual life, mm -hmm. because we can have persons that, as I said earlier, on, we can have persons who are, who may be spiritually strong, they have a good prayer life. But naturally, they have some issues mm -hmm. that they conf that confront them. Mm -hmm. I we we dealt with persons who have issues of anxiety, yeah. and anxiety can actually cause a person to to lose sleep and all sorts of things and that panic attacks, panic attacks and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that can also have an impact on their mm -hmm. mental health. So just explain, just explain to me, you know, how do you deal with a person again? We talk about common mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. Just explain to me. Okay, in terms of dealing with a, an, an, an individual, I mean, in terms of our place in the church and society, mm -hmm. I mean, in church, at least based on biblical principles, we are taught to treat your neighbors like how you treat yourself. Mm -hmm. and the fruits of the spirit and so forth. It's yes. all about being, showing love to one another. Mm -hmm. the That's, I mean, most of us, we are Christians mm -hmm. and so forth, so we understand that. Yeah. We have to be able to provide some form of support to people. Yeah. You understand? Okay. Um, in terms of, well, treatment, of course, that's why you have the National Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The service is free. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? The service is free. You have counselors, mm -hmm. you have psychiatrists, you have social workers. Understand? So these are you have professionals that will help um, the individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? Um, now with yes, depression, anxiety, and like we have mentioned, suicide ideation, and also substance use. Yes. Is a mental. Substance. Okay. Substance. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
it's a method of the sort. Okay, that's one of the things. When you speak about substance, what what substance? Alcohol use, uh -huh. marijuana use, cigarette use. Okay. You understand? So remember initially when we spoke about what is mental health, mm -hmm. ability to be able to cope with challenges yeah. in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So with substance use, mm -hmm. persons they they use nicotine, alcohol, marijuana in order to deal with these challenges. Okay. Yeah, it's only reached a point where they cannot live without it. Mm -hmm. And you you could see the pattern, you could see it starts to affect areas of their life. Like you mentioned, the whole individual. So yeah. it starts to affect their, their work life. Mm -hmm. And it starts to affect their their personal life. Mm -hmm. You understand? And also with so with with mental health there's Something we call a, a co occurring disorder or a dual diagnosis. Okay. So we have someone who's battling with depression. But do, what, what, do you call, what do you call it? Dual diagnosis? Dual diagnosis or co, mm -hmm. co occurring disorder. Co occurring disorder. Okay. Right. So you have someone who's dealing with uh, uh, maybe a nicotine abuse, mm -hmm. nicotine use, sorry, and schizophrenia mm -hmm. or depression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, um, you find also persons tend to self-medicate. Most okay. In terms of in terms of my own experience, mm -hmm. I've met a number of individuals who may have depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. but then they would use substance use to help. They have to cope. Okay, because mm -hmm. that would have been my next question. Yeah. <laughs> so, for example, depression, you have your feeling feeling of sadness, mm -hmm. hopelessness, mm -hmm. you understand? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, mm -hmm. isolation, mm -hmm. you understand? But at the end of the day, you remember, you, you have a responsibility, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. So, you remember, again, we mentioned that the stigma in yeah. terms of reaching out for help. Yeah. So, then persons tend to use marijuana to help mm -hmm. calm their nerves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they say that's a or young happy nah that's a teacher in there that's my ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. yeah. It's true. yeah. It's true. So they would use substance to to cope. to help to, to help manage these mm -hmm. symptoms. Okay. Because the thing is is the pain. It's the pain that you going through at the moment and some persons are not able to handle that pain. Mm -hmm. So they use things like substance abuse as he mentioned. Um there's also pornography as well. Definitely. Okay. Um, and surprisingly, Pornogra pornography. That's, yes. that's also an addiction. It's okay. Addiction well, yeah, yeah. There. And um, you know, there are actually persons in church who actually do suffer with um issues like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you were saying in regards to the importance of the church, mm -hmm. um, like you were saying, the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you in a church environment and you're not receiving that. Mm -hmm. Support, mm -hmm. which is important. Yeah, you will obviously go towards those things yes. to help cope. Okay, to deal with these but issues. From a from a church perspective, mm -hmm. we we don't consider that just to be lust or to be a yes. spirit. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes, spirit. we do. <laughs> <laughs> but then with that too, it also has a lot to do with the mental aspect mm -hmm. because as we offer deliverance here in this ministry, mm -hmm. and like you always say. You can come to deliverance, get delivered, but at the end of the day, your mind, it's still in your mind. You still want to go after it because mm -hmm. you have not actually sat down and dealt with what's in there, mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Now, that is very important. You can deal with the physical aspect of things, but once the mm -hmm. mind has not been dealt with, things will not change. It will continue to be a process. Okay. So this is why you find a lot of people tend to look for different coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in terms of that even if they're in the church mm -hmm. so this is why it's always important and i always say to myself first point of engagement is very very important, yeah, very important. you see the ushers at the door mm -hmm. somebody can come to church um depressed um suicidal everything and the moment they enter the church if the ushers are not set in a space that is that has love and support and they mm -hmm. don't feel that that can actually turn them away from receiving. Okay. So this is why points of engagement is very important. Even at your workplace as well. Mm -hmm. Imagine you coming into a workplace, you already had a stressful day and somebody gives you this, you know, hostility 
Yeah. The first thing you will do that already added to your to your stress <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah. So you yeah. know it it adds it keeps on adding. So this is why the fruits of the spirit are very 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 important and in, and points of engagement is very important okay. as well. Um, even in the school aspect too, um, teachers play a vital role in assisting children who have um mental issues like mm -hmm. depression because children do actually support things like depression and anxiety yeah, yeah but the thing about it is sometimes they do not know that that is what they're going through um for me personally i don't think that i would have known what anxiety and depression was until i started my degree okay um and in me starting my degree being in a space where i had to deal with my own traumas and also my family issues which is also another factor that implements mental health mm -hmm. issues um some some children they don't get the love and support in their home so yeah. what you realize that builds on and as a result they get depressed they have anxiety attacks they, they have mental breakdowns mm -hmm. so what happens is a teacher now has to deliver a child who is experiencing that so if a teacher is if a teacher has the love and support for that child you would find a child would gravitate to towards that mm -hmm. um and this is something that i have seen in my times at um teaching as well i find when you have an open mind and you love and support that child and you're with that child working with that child this child will follow you wherever you go this child okay. will create a bond with you and that mm -hmm. is very important so when it comes to the church this also has to be something that needs to be prioritized as well it's about checking in on your sister or brother um mm -hmm. we we as christians especially persons who are in ministry sometimes we give our all to certain things but at the end of the day we go for our emotional battles but we mm -hmm. don't feel like there is um somebody that would listen to us without going and, and tell everybody else that this person is going through x y and z okay. right so you find sometimes even the trust issues that we have in the church actually permit mental health issues Okay. Because people feel like they cannot trust. For example, I cannot trust you, Apostle. I cannot trust, you know, this elder or this pastor or whatnot because I believe that this person is going to tell everybody as I'm going through X, Y, and Z. So you find people restrict themselves. That's a okay. stigma, yeah. As a stigma. Mm -hmm. But but do you think that because uh you because someone will share what you share with them, mm -hmm. do you think that should be a reason for you to be shut down and for you to die with a condition? <laughs> I don't think so. Personal, personally, I, I, I don't think so. It's all about um, um, being able to, of course, you have to, you have to know your circle. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to find persons who are, you have to be able to discern mm -hmm. individuals who okay. are going to be trustworthy at the end of the day. It's not a case where, no. And again, you remember, if, if, if that individual doesn't have that opportunity to find someone within their, their immediate space, there's there's a helpline yeah. two or three mm -hmm. two or three mm -hmm. you understand two okay or three and it's strictly confidential okay you understand mm -hmm. reaching out to a counselor or social worker mm -hmm. we are bound mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. that, okay that the, these are part of our principles mm -hmm. that these are part of the rules that we live by in terms of confidentiality yeah. okay so everything that you share remains remains yeah there. yeah mm -hmm. and, okay and unless you you intend on harming yourself mm -hmm. harming someone else or mm -hmm. That is when that right. Okay. But, but if so if a person if a person is gonna harm themselves or have the potential to harm themselves, then that is shared. Right. It has to be shared to the proper, proper authority. authority. Okay. You understand? So in terms of harming oneself, so with suicide ideation, you have to work through. So if for example you okay, for example, with suicide ideation, um there's that sense of hopelessness and you you hear a person talking about death, mm -hmm. you understand? They okay. might be talking about killing themselves. And yeah. most of the times we certain persons say casually, but we, we play it no mind. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. something we have to we have to really take into consideration. We need to now um prove that individual mm -hmm. to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? Especially in the church setting. Yeah. You, you realize, okay, oh hey, I had Sicily and you mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you understand? You know, that that would have been my next question. <laughs> <laughs> but, Why would you think that yeah. um you know, addressing mental health issues and why is it important to address mental health issues even in the church? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, okay, for me personally, the church is a hospital. Yeah. Mm. Spiritually, it's a it's spiritual a hospital. hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? The ones that, we the ones that are broken, either, that's where we come yeah. mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Yeah. You understand? And um, 
personally for me the the church it's an entity that should at least be able to help me meet our needs mm -hmm. okay so i do believe that it's, it's, it's important mm -hmm. to address it in, to address the, church, it, yeah. in the church to address it what do you mean addressing the church you mean publicly or well, well, I, I i wouldn't say it publicly but <laughs> i mean in, in terms of in, in the church set, yeah, in the, the church, church set, yeah, yeah i mean in, in terms of like what we're doing here we're yeah giving information if, if you know someone uh, uh, a brother or sister uh, who's going of course you would you then have to speak with that individual and and maybe find key persons that mm -hmm. they themselves may um, be, may be close to mm -hmm. may have a rapport with mm -hmm. yeah. to help encourage them because most times it's like you're in a ditch and you, you just don't know how to get up mm -hmm. so you need persons mm -hmm. there to help mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. give you that support okay and or, or you reach out to a family mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. and of course in terms of speaking with that individual some some persons may, might be open about it yeah. they say okay well yes we could we could we could deal with it on on at, at the church level in terms mm -hmm. of informing mm -hmm. the other members and the other members would then mm -hmm. give that support mm -hmm. but it's important it's important listen especially as christians is important you see that stigma yeah we have to we have to put that on okay so we have to put that um, but even some... with that too um like you said it doesn't even have to take a specific sister to say i'm going to harm myself when you said probing a puzzle somebody from church can have a conversation with you or any of the mm -hmm. leaders or anybody specifically and based on what they say mm -hmm. you now you probe to find out what exactly is going on okay. um, and that's one thing that they teach us social workers when we receive a client and a client comes in for let's say a client comes in for probably housing assistance or something of that sort in your conversation with the client you tend to realize that something is wrong yeah. so what we do now is we find the different questions and we ask the clients you know what about things at home and you know we go into detail mm -hmm. now coming out of that conversation you tend to find out exactly what the client is going through mm -hmm. so that is when we as social workers we step in and then we refer to the client the client to different um you know social agencies or different support services or whatnot okay. so in regards to the church um being in a leadership position is actually very very important because people come to you mm -hmm. now somebody may come to you for let's just give a, a, an example somebody is going through issues at home mm -hmm. and they come to you probably just for um to just talk it out and maybe there's a financial issue or something of that sort now you can assist them with that financial issue mm -hmm. but then in your conversation with that individual you get to find out that this individual is actually very unhappy very overwhelmed now you in that leadership position you probably little now probing a little actually takes some specific skills <laughs> mm -hmm. it's actually not for everybody but there are certain questions that you um allow to help you communicate with um that person open-ended open questions are very important and you create a comfortability with that individual mm -hmm. now rapport is also very very important yeah, yeah, okay. rapport yeah. is very important um you have to build rapport with um, persons in church and this is why it's important to always check in with individuals mm -hmm. um not only leadership but also people in church you don't see the sister you see something check in so if in the event that this sister is going through something they know they can call you up and tell you okay i'm going for x y and z this is where you build trust and this is where you build rapport mm -hmm. which actually can can help us um christians actually move forward with our health issues if we feel like we have somebody to talk to we can actually sit and analyze these things and um help overcome some of our health issues so that is actually very very important okay uh and in in, in scripture mm -hmm. there are a few persons mm -hmm. in scripture mm -hmm. who suffered yes with mental with mental condition yes. are you are you aware are you aware of that yes yes Yes, you know. we have David. Uh -huh. We Elijah. also have um, Nebuchadnezzar as well. Mm -hmm. We have Elijah. Job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Saul, Elijah and Saul. Elijah, at, if you, I think with Elijah, there was some um, form of suicide ideation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> he, he became suicidal at, yeah. also, at one time. He also had ideation. depression and, and yeah, anxiety yeah. as well. And, and um, what's the name? Jonah. No. Right. Right. Yeah. So Jonah, because Jonah wished death, you know, 
and and so because we we we're talking about so so now let us just go a little a little further. Um, why do you think it's essential, right, uh, to prioritize mental health, and how do you recognize mental health issues? So, yeah. um, okay, why is it important to um, prioritize mental health? Mm -hmm. It's important to prioritize mental health because if we do not deal with the small mental health issues such as panic attacks, phobia, mm -hmm. anxiety, it can actually develop into a mental disorder. Because like I said, your cognitive function, your mental, if mm -hmm. this is not something that is prioritized, once the brain is not functioning, the entire body just goes haywire. Okay. So imagine you have not dealt with your issues or your stresses. Now, stressors can be whether it is family issues, um, financial, financial issues as well, issues. relationship, um, on the job, pressures on the job, school, whatnot. These things can actually be stressors. Now, if you do not deal with these issues um, and you actually continue to have things like anxiety and depression, mental breakdowns, panic attacks, suicidal thoughts, you feel like you're losing your mind. So these things can actually permit um mental health issues now the bible says that an unstable man is, is double man in all, your, in all of his ways mm -hmm. now one of the things that you have to be very mindful of is that um sometimes like you were saying persons feel like they're hearing voices mm -hmm. because sometimes when you're in a complete state of um how would i say anxiety or even panic attacks sometimes you would hear two sides <laughs> two sides are speaking to you mm -hmm. one side will tell you fight on you know you can do this and then the other side of you will tell you no no, no just give up okay. now if you listen to the side that is telling you to give up then you know things will only get worse from there so that can actually permit that now one of the things i always tell people i prioritize my peace of mind that is very very essential to me and prioritizing mental health so, sometimes yeah. self-care yes self-care is very important sometimes you just have to take some time off and just relax mm -hmm. you know go to the beach go to the movies do something with friends or sit down and just analyze your own thoughts read a book relax breathing exercises um exercises as well now um in terms of recognizing mental health issues mood swings <laughs> sometimes um or mood changes sometimes we know this person to be jolly and happy and all of a sudden we see this person is sad and down that's something that we need to um you know be observant of um there's also withdrawal from friends if you know there's somebody who's always yeah somebody who's always around their friends all of a sudden the person wants to be by themselves mm -hmm. that means that something is wrong um you also have detachment from reality sometimes persons feel displaced you get up on the morning and you feel somehow you're having an out-of-body experience okay you know you feel as if yes you're disoriented like what 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 am i doing there sometimes you're on the job and you feel displaced people mm -hmm. are having conversations but you away from them because technically you, you you're not okay um you also have things such as worry and anxiety now one of the things that i've noticed you see persons who have family issues, mm -hmm. persons who also have relationship issues as well, um, and also school, likewise. When you sit and you internalize your thoughts, that can actually cause more anxiety and depression. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you find somebody is just in a headspace. Sometimes you're speaking to this individual, and all of a sudden you're speaking, and it's like you have to be snapping your fingers. Like, are you there? Are you there? This person is having some deep, deep thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some negative and positive that can happen with those deep, deep thoughts. Sometimes you put yourself in a position where all you're thinking is negative, and that is something where if you're observant, if you're close to somebody or family member or whatnot, and you know this person to not be that type of person to always sit down and have just those deep, deep thoughts, you be observant of that. Okay. Um, there's also, temp um, they call it um, temper tantrums. Now, we see a lot of that with children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see a lot of that with my niece as well. Um, but if you know there is somebody who's always quiet and then having a simple conversation with them, all of a sudden they want to push for the door or they want to shout after you or something, these are things to tell you that hey something is wrong okay. now there are some people who have actually um experiencing 
changes mm-hmm. but they've not been able to analyze it even insomnia as well you're trying to fall asleep seven eight hours no sleep is coming that means that something is wrong mm-hmm. now some of us we feel like something is wrong but again we don't know how to express it or we don't know what is going wrong with us so okay. this is why That's prioritizing right. yes this is why family support family Recognize. support is important mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Recognize also ch- ch- the church okay. support is important as well even friends too so it doesn't always have to take an individual to check what's going on with them mm-hmm. sometimes it has to take from people from the outside to do that okay let me let me mention one thing right. to because again, just now, again, you're sharing, you're sharing with us <laughs> how to recognize <laughs> mental con- <laughs> mental condition. Most most of the, the stuff she said, it was spot on. But um, one of the things you you asked in terms of why is it important to prioritize it, right? Yeah. We need to understand as well that um, um, stressors, mm-hmm. how we deal with stress, mm-hmm. and certain mental health conditions. Can also manifest itself physically. Yeah. Okay. Anxiety. Mm-hmm. You um, are disease. Mm-hmm. You understand. Sometimes all of a sudden you have body pain yeah. and you cannot. You cannot explain why. You understand. You you go you you go to the doctors. You try to find out, but you understand. So all of all of these things could 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 come up as a result of um, the way we 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 tend to our our mental health as well. Okay. You understand, so it it is connected to our physical mm-hmm. health. So we need to take that into mm-hmm. consideration as well. Okay, I want to go off off script for just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone someone asked a question: um, Could other health conditions be contributing to symptoms of depression? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like yeah, like we mentioned, it it, it could manifest itself physically. Yeah, but she was not there earlier, so yeah, it, 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 so, it, it, it does. It does. You call it a um. Um, psychosomatic uh, condition, you understand? Know, okay. it, it manifests itself physically. You start to have pain all over, headaches, mm-hmm. you understand mm-hmm. how you develop heart disease again, um, certain feelings in terms of, mm-hmm. of certain organs and, and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. extreme stress. Mm-hmm. Extreme stress. You understand? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, like I mentioned, you go to the doctor, you cannot find out all, and there's this case where persons just, just fall and die. Yeah. For no apparent reason. Oh, he was healthy and thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like she's like you said, once you see internalizing that mm-hmm. these thoughts mm-hmm. in your mind, yeah. having these intense migraines, mm-hmm. you understand body pain. Mm-hmm. You understand? And in addition to that, again, lack of sleep. Lack of so that yeah, is I, a, a I, very I struggle with that bad. I struggle that bad. And I struggle with sleep for I mean it's been years. I, I struggle with that. You know, mm-hmm. I if I tell you I've not had a good eight hours rest mm-hmm. in a very, very long time in years. Yeah. Well, there's, very... something, there's something you call sleep hygiene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you have some time, just sleep, look, look, sleep, yeah. sleep hygiene? Yeah. So okay. certain things you, you do before bed. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Routine yeah. Yeah. you yeah. develop before yeah. bed yeah. Uh-huh. to help you. Because yeah. certain things, certain habits we develop, yeah. it, mm-hmm. it tends to... Of our circadian, yeah, it's true, it's mm-hmm. true, it's true. So, yes, yeah. yeah. sleep hygiene is a Technic- important thing. techniques are very important because, like you, Apostle, um, for me, this this semester of school has just been very difficult, and mm-hmm. I actually that's the first time in my entire life I have had issues sleeping. Okay. Now, me noticing the issues of sleeping in my mind, I was like, What is this? Mm-hmm. but then this is where you learn different sleep techniques um one of the things that i did and i learned that from one of the courses um you see exercise Mm -hmm. that's important you see meditation Mm -hmm. um even um there's also this this meditation for me i find that really really helps um before you sleep focus on your breathing you take some deep breaths you lay down on the bed you focus on your breathing they can have noises and all of these things around you these distractions around you but focus Mm -hmm mainly on your breathing mm-hmm. and that in itself can can go a very very long way mm-hmm. now sleeping issues with sleeping has a lot to do with stress yes. a lot yes. to do with stress okay now like you said sometimes your patterns before you sleep changes i'm used to being a busy body which mm-hmm. is sort of just like you um and if after a while 
you tend to be not so busy, the body does not recognize that. So you find the body is not used to being so energetic. So it takes longer to sleep. So my, um, my advice to anybody who is trying to change different patterns and whatnot before they fall asleep, take it in time periods. Don't do everything all at mm-hmm. once. You know, take time to get there. So for like for you who's always busy, <laughs> mm-hmm. but then you have issues sleeping, it is important for you to prioritize your, your, your mental peace, but try to cut back, but don't cut back too much mm-hmm. if you get what I see. So um do something relaxing, you know, when you can. <laughs> because I, I know I, you're very, I very do. busy. I do. I, so I, I, I love stay away from the, yeah, from from the, the screen at yeah. an hour before bed. First of all, I mean we will be here. We yeah. have <laughs> you have to do these things. Yeah. You have to you you have to at least an hour before bed. Stay away from, from the, the screen, yeah. from the screen, the phone. Mm-hmm. I know it's kind of difficult. <laughs> Some of us we end up using TV shows yeah. to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> you can also you incorporate understand? reading as well before mm. you fall asleep. One of the things that I've learned is that reading before you the moment you lay down on the bed and you start reading something the eyes starting to close because you're reading mm-hmm. you know don't do anything that requires you to think too much before right, you go right. to bed okay exercise is exercise very is important, important right? very important no 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 we hate everything <laughs> it's exercise it, it helps me mm-hmm. that's it's it's important very important you understand we we hate every day we mm-hmm. we, we disregard it but it's very important very very important yeah very very important yeah, but these are some of the, the, the simple things mm-hmm. we can do to help mm-hmm. also safeguard our, our mental, mental health. health you understand? Mm-hmm. By sleeping on time, mm-hmm. being able to get a, at least eight to seven hours mm-hmm. sleep. And sometimes we need a routine. We need a sleep routine mm-hmm. as well. I mean, it doesn't always have to be a daily thing. But if you, let's say, you know you're usually busy on a five week, like a five day period. Mm-hmm. A sleep pattern in place. So okay. you know these five days at a certain point in time you cut off all activity and you focus on your sleep. Mm-hmm. So you find what's going to happen is when you do that, the the balance of the other days and you don't get sufficient sleep, the days prior will make up for it. So you don't feel as groggy and tired and, and all of these things. So you have to put some things in place in regards to that. Okay. Well, let me ask you. I know we we we've gone quite a, <laughs> a bit, and and you know we're talking about how how then can the church effectively minister? How do you think that the church can effectively uh, minister to individuals and families who are dealing with mental conditions? How do you think that the church, you know, or how would you uh, suggest? Mm-hmm. that the church i mean we have our method in terms of how we deal with mental condition but in your opinion how do you think that the church should deal with it okay well um with persons who may have family members who struggle with um, mental illness right mm-hmm. um most times they they are unable to even get some some rest mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's like you on edge yes okay mm-hmm. So probably giving a helping hand, mm-hmm. and giving them some time to mm-hmm. kind of um, basically catch themselves. Yeah. Again. Okay. So probably going home and mm-hmm. helping them clean up. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, listen, we could do. There, there are a lot of basic mm-hmm. things yeah, that we can do. Sure. Mm-hmm. Basic things to do. And one one of the things um, Christians didn't realize as well. You see the church setting. That's that's basically a mm-hmm. Okay. That's a support system. Mm-hmm. You understand? That's a support system again. Mm-hmm. It's a very good support system. Because, again, because amazing, amazing you say that because a number of persons try to pull people out of mm-hmm. the church system. No, no, no. It's it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a good support system. It's a very it's good a support very system. Very good support mm-hmm. system at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Because you come, you you get to socialize, you get to meet people. All of us, we have something. We have Christ as mm-hmm. a, we we share mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. share that love for Christ. Yeah, you understand. Mm-hmm. We're able to give our testimonies. Mm-hmm. You understand mm-hmm. to encourage. Right, mm-hmm. give 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 encouraging words mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. You understand. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition, more of these, more of these forms, more of these discussions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
more beats for us yeah. could, could, could go along with. Because I, I used, educating them mm -hmm. I used today them as more, more of an introduction because right. I know oh, we're going to yeah. have some, and this is why we are yeah. talking this yeah. way. You know, I really wanted to use mm -hmm. today as an introduction, you know, and then we can go into some some deeper stuff, right, right, right. you know, at another mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But I, I wanted people to be aware right. of what we are dealing with. And it's not just it's not just outside of the church, but it's also in the church. In the church. And persons can bury themselves in the church mm -hmm. and not recognize also that they're also dealing yes. with a mental yes. condition. Yes. You know? And automatically it, it, it trans it would translate mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the communities as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Now it's important for the church to also work with um professionals like us mm -hmm. as well. Persons okay. who deal with um individuals who do struggle with mental health issues and that comes across as you know the social workers the psychiatrists the therapists um counselors mm -hmm. it's good for a church to incorporate um persons of that nature okay. to do um education and awareness which is what we're doing today yeah. but also to implement um programs um and also you can actually um use that in in the sermons as well mm -hmm. um you know not only with the testimonial part of things but also in the sermons because it it is really important us as christians we are living um and we applying the biblical context to mm. our daily lives now in order for us to do that we have to understand that persons did do with the handle these issues in the past in those biblical days yeah and um surprisingly persons some persons <laughs> did not even recognize that there were persons in the bible who deal, dealt with mental health oh, issues yeah. until today oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so my thing is if churches um whether it is the pastor leaders elders or whatnot can actually incorporate that in their sermons mm -hmm. to teach persons you know and to also have um there are also passages of scripture that can actually help persons um heal with those mental health issues. Um, you know, for example, if we look at, um, you know, we have like Psalms 46, which says God is our refuge and yeah. our strength. Now, one of the things that I, I love to do, I personally, I love to do, whenever I feel like I'm going through um, maybe stress or anxiety, I remind myself of what God has spoken. Now, if we, as a church, um, as leaders and we are able to combine these things we don't necessarily have to allow things like depression and anxiety reach to a mental disorder because we can target it, target it from the get-go you know so this is why it's important for the church to incorporate professionals and persons like that to learn our expertise mm -hmm. and share so that we can intervene the right way and also the the i also educational programs as mm -hmm. well yeah, persons persons in the church might be interested mm -hmm. I, I know they, they mm -hmm. offer certain courses in terms of um, um psychological procedures yes. mm -hmm. yeah. you understand yes. these kind of courses they will help you recognize and help you to at least be able to proper refer individuals mm -hmm. you understand to, to the necessary um entities that, that provide that that support as well so first of all you kind of give them that kind of yeah, like presentation presentations yes. mm -hmm. yeah, presentation. or educational programs mm -hmm. i know there are a number a uh, number of them online so, mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. yeah. some just so could uh, help them understand what mental illness is and, and their parts okay yeah, so do you um then share with me what resources before you go on what resources are available here in st lucia that you know one can say whether hey, this is available in solution mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that helps deal with mental illness so you know can you just share with us okay so there's the office there's the national mm -hmm. wellness center mm -hmm. so like i mentioned it's a it's a free service um there's a two or three hotline mm -hmm. you understand it's a 24-hour service mm -hmm. you understand and it's you don't need to have credit on your phone to okay it's a free call at the end of the day um the any individual who's suffering with suicide ideation depression anxiety you can call mm -hmm. the helpline there's there's someone on the other end who provide them with support also they could 
ask to see a council. Yes. Mm. And then they will you refer them. Mm -hmm. If individuals have their own private counselors, mm -hmm. I know we have a, mm -hmm. a number of private counselors mm -hmm. mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And um, like I mentioned, most times persons consider substance use as a mental condition. There's a turning point, mm -hmm. and yes, turning point is still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. It's you know, the turning person still access the service that they okay. already sensory. That, that that services are the well as well. Mm -hmm. So these are the resources that we 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 have. We we have other groups as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure of all, all the other groups. There's this um group via creative group, they provide um okay. counseling and group therapy and so forth as well. And there, there are a number of other agencies in St. Lucia. But again, free service, yeah. what mm -hmm. is that? Two or three, okay. That's that's awesome because I I too have had persons that I deal with with mental mm -hmm. conditions, and I've had persons who um consider who are substance abuse, and I think in one of the um one of the chapters, one of the programs that they do is a confession aspect, mm -hmm. and so you have persons say, well, you know, I, I want to speak to a pastor, right, uh, right. to to confess, uh, yes, and yes, to talk yes, about yes. yes. You know, because yes. I have done quite a bit of, <laughs> I have done quite a bit of it because, you see, for me, I, again, as I said, I make myself available in every aspect and every way I can possibly do, you know, and I don't believe I can save everyone, yeah. but I believe that if I save one, that is sufficient for me. Yeah. Yeah. So because I don't know which one I'm going to save, <laughs> I try to make myself available as best yeah. as possible, you know, because. I've seen what mental health can do. And, and I say that because I I also experienced again suicide. My dad, my father committed suicide. You know, so I, I understand what it is to go through certain things and to deal with it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Um, because sometimes a person can be quite silent. Sure. And we don't know what, what they're going through yes. because we think, hey, you know, possibly that's just how he he's he the customer behaving that way. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we kind of ignore certain signs. Mm -hmm. But if you really know a person, there has to be something about that person yeah. that has changed. That has changed, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things you have to look yeah. at. Okay. Again, isolation. Mm -hmm. You realize that, um, for example, the individual begins to lose interest in yeah. certain things that they, that they enjoyed mm -hmm. doing before. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, they talk about suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They talk about killing themselves, mm -hmm. they talk about they speak about death mm -hmm. very often. You understand? Mm -hmm. Um oh, oh yes, well one more thing. They at times they tend to neglect their hygiene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Sure. They tend okay. to neglect their hygiene, tend to neglect certain main duties, mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. probably even supporting the family. Yeah. An increased use of drugs and alcohol because remember we mentioned that persons use drugs and alcohol to self-medicate yeah 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 to numb mm -hmm. that feeling at the end of the day mm -hmm. so these are the signs that we these are okay. some of the signs that we need to um that's why being being observant is very very, yeah, important. very important um don't wait for somebody to tell you that they have an issue those little signs those factors as we mentioned um if persons are able to observe that with people around them um we can actually basically hit this thing up at its root okay so i, I want to ask a crazy question <laughs> Not crazy. <laughs> but can an, a new environment affect a person's mental a new environment yeah let's say for, let's say for example a person just moved into a new community mm -hmm. yeah. that's major life change uh, yes that's yeah. a, major, a major life change, a major life change. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> even getting married. Yeah, yeah. Because, because that's important. Yeah. And these are some of the things that we don't yeah, that's yeah. not been spoken about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, and I think that it's important to speak about these things. But sometimes the person may say, Well, hey, you know what? But you just move into a nice neighborhood, mm -hmm. you just move into a great environment, you just got married. So what what is there to worry it's about? A, it's a form of grief. It's it a loss. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily grief is not only a loss of a loved one, mm -hmm. but you lose something valuable. Yeah. Okay. Something familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you understand? A new habitat, so you have to try to cope with it now. Yeah, now you may not cope idea. with it the right way. 
Um, and that is why it's always important um, to, should I say, experience that habitat. Like, I know if you you getting married is is something that is yeah. you know yeah. new to you yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. a new experience yeah. with somebody but these are some conversations that need to um happen before you go towards things mm-hmm. like that um i think sometimes some persons they like to know what they're going into yeah um you'd find some persons do research um mm-hmm. some persons try to spend time some persons but it's not it's not something that is always available to you Mm-hmm. Um and it gives room for changes um mm-hmm. to happen and you may not be able to cope with it the right way. Mm-hmm. Um and that is why when persons have those major life changes, it's always good to have a support system. Yeah, support system. To guide them through. Yeah. Um yeah. that is why one of the things um that I have never really um liked about um the church part of things is that Couples get married. Prior to to marriage, you get counseling. Yeah, but then, yeah. after the fact, when couples are going through the issues, you find that is that is no longer available, and you find now that persons have to try to cope with it on their own. On their own yeah. Now, some persons are not as strong as others, so it's, it's not a case of not being strong, mm-hmm. but they're not able to cope, of, right? Of, not having the necessary right. tools, tools or not being mm-hmm. able to access mm-hmm. the necessary, necessary tools, tools right. whether it be externally or mm-hmm. internally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you find a lot of um, new couples or even older couples as well, they actually suffer internally because okay. that counseling is not offered within the marriage. Um, and that is another important issue as well that I believe that the church needs to um, look at in that, that aspect. Um, it's not that you're saying that you want counseling 24-7, mm-hmm. but at least um, persons would like to know that even though even that they need support or they're going through a specific issue, they can actually get that counseling to this, um, you know, within the church. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that needs to be um, paid for or whatnot, mm-hmm. but you know that there is something. If, if you and your partner having an issue, you can connect with, you know, the pastor or whomever to give you, you know, those essential um, techniques or skills mm-hmm. or whatever that you need, um, which is very important because, I mean, you you can, can tell me prior to, to um, your marriage, you know, there are things that you would be, the two of you would be able to handle, but then mm-hmm. within the marriage, there are also other things that come about. Yeah. Now, um, not everybody is able to support each other the, the way that they need. Mm-hmm. So um, if this is incorporated, um, whether it is through a pastor, even family or friends or whatnot, that will actually go a very, very long way. So your support system mm-hmm. is, um, very is, 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 is essential. Okay. That's why we, when you see we do our interventions, we always include the family mm-hmm. members. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. include them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is there training for family members who have persons who are dealing with mental uh, uh, um, conditions? Well, is there I any training say, or anything? Well, that... um, usually, like like I mentioned earlier, um, you have the the family meetings, mm-hmm. yeah, the son, where um, we would basically educate the family about the individual's condition, yeah, and what role they could play. We first of all, we try to gather that information in terms of their patterns and what necessary resources they would have mm-hmm. to provide, mm-hmm. provide for that individual and then basically um give them the necessary information as to how to do how to handle okay. the individual and so forth. That's a that's a must that's a must. Because with any any type of illness, any type of turmoil or life challenge, support is mm-hmm. very important. important. And again, you would find you have individuals where the family may have already given up. Okay. Yeah, yeah and that happens a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Now the thing is, again, when you see when you you get to experience it, sometimes you can't really blame the family members. Mm-hmm. You understand? Sure. You cannot blame them because imagine, right? Imagine you have a family member who's basically going down here and it keeps pinning you to see that individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you reach a point where you just don't have a choice, you just 
you can scam up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we do find individuals who come <clears throat> to the hospital and we cannot find any cannot find any form of support. Mm-hmm. So now that's why that's where the role of the church comes in. Mm-hmm. So now that individual decides to put the tree, so now they have, they have that family, mm-hmm. they have that support. Mm-hmm. Okay. You understand? They have that support. And you find most 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 times when you speak with persons about their goals and things, what again, one of the main things they talk about is going back to church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then we do encourage that mm-hmm. because it's it's a good it's a good support system mm-hmm. for them. It's a good support system where where whatever resources, whatever emotional resources the the family mean the, the biological family may not be able to provide the church mm-hmm. will be able to mm-hmm. provide mm-hmm. that as well. Because okay. you will find someone that may resonate with you or someone that may be on the same path with you will be able mm-hmm. to you know, understand share experiences and uplift each other as well. Because, because for me one one of the one of the scriptures that you know stays with me always no matter no matter what I go through mm-hmm. uh even if I sometimes feel overwhelmed, because mm-hmm. at some point in time you feel overwhelmed. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and one of the scriptures that always keeps me is the scripture that says, Be anxious for nothing, nothing. Yes. but in everything in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known mm-hmm. unto him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I, when I, when I read the scripture, no matter how I am, no matter how I'm feeling, it just kind of just refreshes me. Mm-hmm. And I I believe, you know, that persons have to have this one thing, mm-hmm. this one scripture, mm-hmm. this one word, mm-hmm. that when they find themselves in a place of depression mm-hmm. or in a place of weariness, mm-hmm. that that one scripture or that one word can just them. carry them through or take them through any journey that they're on. Because, because one of the things I've, I've learned is that there's always going to be something to depress you, mm-hmm. yep. especially the world that we're living in now, mm-hmm. you know, and, and if you don't have, if you don't have uh, um, guard, your guards, if you don't have your walls properly built, if your foundation is not strong enough, mm-hmm. when life throws everything at you, what's holding you? What's holding you? What's holding you? Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I believe it becomes it becomes necessary, uh, and the, the role of the church because we we talking about the, the church, and the role of the church, what role the church plays, how does the church get involved mm-hmm. in dealing with you know these sort of conditions? I mean, yeah, there's the spiritual aspect, there's a the deliverance aspect, yeah, yeah. you know, that we. I mean, I administer to deliverance to persons who have had mental conditions, mm-hmm. and I've seen the transformation. I've seen the change, and I've seen those persons, whether five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, mm-hmm. I see them still on the same track. Mm-hmm. They're far better, mm-hmm. you know. And and so, I I don't think sometimes we understand effectively our role mm-hmm. in society. Mm-hmm. And how we impact the lives of people, oh, mm-hmm. you know, be, because we can look at we can look at it in one light. But persons who are traumatized mm-hmm. are coming to the church. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I said initially. That's a <laughs> <place. laughs> yeah. yeah, because it's like they try everything else, mm-hmm. and it's like their last resort. Hey, you know, if I don't if I don't go to the church, if I don't try God, mm-hmm. and some of the things try God. So if I don't try God, yeah. if I don't try to church, listen, I have none to be for yeah, again. It's true. It's you know, because we've met I've met persons with such situ- yeah. with such situations. Mm-hmm. And I, I have learned how uh to to deal with persons on all fronts, on all levels. Because I think one of the things is the church has to be flexible mm-hmm. in dealing with people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for this reason, we, we are here. And I, as I said, it's, this is really just an introduction. Mm-hmm. I know we have some questions. Mm-hmm. We, we've gone into some of it, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I, I really think that just having this heart to heart talk, mm-hmm. you know, because people are there. Yeah. And there are persons who are on this line yeah. who may be dealing with yeah. someone and who may know someone. Yeah 
who's dealing with depression, mm -hmm. who's dealing with uh, anxiety, mm -hmm. who's dealing with frustration, who's dealing with stress. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I think it becomes important for us to share from our hearts yeah. also, mm -hmm. you know, our experience yeah. with dealing with we're dealing with clients, mm -hmm. we're dealing with people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going into details yeah. in terms of the persons yeah. that we've dealt with, mm -hmm. but just uh, uh, on a, you know, just to share in a nutshell, mm -hmm. you know, what we've dealt with. Mm -hmm. One of what is one of the worst situations you've dealt with? Either one, either one of you. You personally, or in terms of personally, in terms of your profession, you know. Without going into without going into <laughs> without going into detail. <laughs> um, for me personally, I think mm -hmm. one of the worst situations that I have dealt with. Um, there was somebody very very close to me, um, who was actually battling depression and suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. and um, this individual was in my home at this specific point in time, crying out for help, and um, I actually witnessed this individual cut up the wrist. Mm -hmm. And imagine blood is dripping from in, in, from this individual's hand, and this individual now is looking towards you, um, you know, for help. Um, and you're sitting there, and you figure out what do you do in in a moment like that. Um, yes, you can call and whatnot, but you're this person in this confined space with it, with this individual. Um, so one of the things that I had to do in that regard is um well definitely i prayed <laughs> but i had to be an encouragement um to this individual and i had to really find out what was going on and i remember at that point in time this individual actually collapsed in my hand um and i mean i cannot panic <laughs> mm -hmm. i cannot panic because this individual is depending on me for support and i remember after sitting and encouraging and you know praying and everything this individual um i mean they came back to their senses and i sat down with this individual and just to find out exactly what was going on um and i realized like what you said um if we're not observant like there were signs that this individual showed me that they were not okay but sometimes i believe we as individuals sometimes we get so caught up with life and we get so busy that we tend to neglect persons when they are actually crying out for help. Yes. So in that instance, I felt very bad. Um, and I had to remind myself of what is it that I was supposed to do for, for this individual in, in that point in time. Um, and after that fact, I, I did vow to myself from now on, I will be very, very observant because like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to take somebody to tell you that something is wrong. You have to, despite our busy life, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everybody needs love, everybody needs support, everybody needs comfort. Yeah. Now, you find some people tend to look for it in the wrong means. And this is why one of the, the goals of our profession is that we don't judge people. Yeah. And this is why when I see persons um, who actually have, they're struggling with mental illness or you're seeing persons... Um, you know, they're living their life wildly, as some people would say. I do not judge. I always say to myself, something brought this person to this this point. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very important that we don't discriminate. We don't attach stigma to people. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for us to sit and just analyze and just believe that people actually do go through issues. And um, it's very important that we we use the fruits of the spirit. I mean, as human beings, um, the same way you want somebody to love and care for you and support you, we need to do the same onto people as well. Um, and that is one of the things that this this moment taught me. And I really thank God that in that instance, um, I was able to use my social skills and encourage and intervene. And I was able to, you know, send the person to the different um the different services and resources for them to get help and assistance at that point in time but it did show me that i need to be very more aware of my surroundings and you know the changes in behavior and stuff like that and um you know moving forward um i believe that that is something that we should all do 
you know, um, because it's very, very important, even with ourselves internally. Sometimes you feel like you're going through a lot. And then, like you said, also, sometimes you do feel very overwhelmed. And um, we have to find what works for us in, in that state. You mm-hmm. know, are you going to use scripture? Are you going to go to the beach? Are you going to walk? But like I always say, learn to prioritize your mental health. Sometimes it just takes you stepping away from the noise Mm-hmm. just sitting in your little corner and just analyzing your thoughts or what not to just be at peace with things and not allow the depression or the anxiety to take over you um and that is one of the things i believe that is just very very important with us as christians um even in regards to ministry likewise mm-hmm. i mean <laughs> apostle you know i know ministry takes it too after after a very long time um, especially when you see you're very persistent in ministry. Um, sometimes you find it can be very exhausting and you now need to personalize yourself. This is why I always say to myself, and like you always say, Apostle, if you're in ministry and um, you feel like you need a break or you just need some time, and whether it's a day or two or whatnot, you know, you you just take that time out to just prioritize yourself because it makes no sense to minister to other people and at the end of the day you're not okay Mm -hmm. so this is why self-care is very very vital um and i always i always preach to people it is not wrong to say that you're not okay i think we have to move away from the stigma of telling everybody that we're okay and you know we're putting on this this big jacket and this big coat and we feel like we always have to consistently like man up because we have to keep in control of things. It's very important to tell people that, hey, I'm not okay. So if I'm not okay, that means, you know, you can sit down and say that you're not okay as well. Yeah. You know, and that is very, very important. If we, as human beings, have to move forward and really deal with our issues, it's important for us to just be real. And it's, it's okay to... It's okay to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember... Um, Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, did you ask yeah. if yeah. this cup could pass away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At that time, you yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. And now, one, one, one of the things I wanted to um point out yeah. as well, right? Um, sometimes, why do we we tend to treat person someone with a medical condition differently than someone with a mental health condition? Yeah. For example, um. You have someone with a broken leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, pump them. Them. yeah, pump them. Mm-hmm. You would tell, yeah. hey, get up, do something, yeah. try and do something for yourself. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because you understand that yeah, mm-hmm. the bone is yeah. like real and yeah. so forth. It's basically the same thing with someone who's going through mm-hmm. depression mm-hmm. And, and, and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that is when they need they need the support and they, the, need the support. they need it the most mm-hmm. because we expect that hey mm-hmm. you need to manage mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. your business too. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So that's why it's very important. Now you see for me, in terms of my own experience, I have a, a close family member who has a mental condition. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I end up developing a passion. Mm-hmm. Because at first I didn't really understood yeah for my I question is my question i did i did re- and no that's the thing that's that's what it got was because when i when, when i went to school i said but why why mm-hmm. why nobody never came and expressed mm-hmm. us what that individual was, was going through yeah. so I, I just would be able to understand what 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 we in turn can do to you know, help give yeah. support and so forth you understand so that's one of the things that basically pushed me Okay. Into, into social work, mm-hmm. okay. especially in terms of the mental health aspect. And the thing is, folks, you have young, young individuals, mm-hmm. you understand, young individuals who are, who are suffering. Mm-hmm. You understand? Young individuals. And I remember, remember earlier we spoke about COVID and how it affected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The children and yeah, yeah, adult, yeah. yeah the, the adolescents yeah. now, now what they do, they resort to using marijuana. Yeah. Mm. Now, with marijuana and alcohol, you have something we call induced psychosis. Yeah. Mm. Induced so, psychosis? Yeah. Okay. So either it can be marijuana induced psychosis, mm-hmm. alcohol induced psychosis. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, excessive use mm-hmm. or the, the marijuana has a chemical we call THC. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, it's not measured. Okay. THC might affect you differently mm -hmm. as opposed to yeah. how it will affect you at the end of the day. Yeah. That like could cause visual or auditory hallucinations. Okay. You understand? So imagine you're at work, imagine you're here in your office and you're here in pastor talking to somebody. Yeah. And we can be pastor, we can be Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. You, you, you. That guy, mm -hmm. that guy in the corner I'm speaking with, mm -hmm. you know, some other time. Mm -hmm. And what do you call it? What do you call that? What do you call that? Marijuana juice. Marijuana, okay. Or substance so, juice. Like, what's mm -hmm. You understand? So it would kind of induce these type of hallucinations. Okay. At the end of the day. So you have a lot of young folks going, going through, going through. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. But now, but, but hold on. Mm -hmm. right? And now one of the things we need to consider as well, that um, persons who tend to have a family history of mental illness, mm -hmm. there's a there's a chance, there's a high chance that you may develop in that as well. Okay. And again, you remember we spoke about all the yeah. tips of self-care mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. We have to take in consideration in terms of exercise, mm -hmm. eating healthy. Mm -hmm. You understand? In terms of helping, using positive coping mechanisms mm -hmm. to deal with our mm -hmm. stress as opposed to negative, negative ones. ones. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's isolating yourself and watching Netflix mm -hmm. only will not solve. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, it will only numb it for a period of yeah, time, like, but you yeah. have to deal with it soon. All these substances mm -hmm. will not, will not make it worse. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because you consider that. I, I was asked because one of the things I've seen, especially the 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 kids now, there's a lot of home products. Mm. Cleaning products that are being used, yeah, sure. yeah, so sure. and okay. some parents are not aware of that, mm -hmm. and and this children at home and they're using those mm -hmm. cleaning mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want I, in in the children and the adolescent. What would be a recommendation in terms of how to deal with them with the mental conditions? Because because you have a lot of that, you have a lot of that. And as we were talking, you know, the post um, COVID, after COVID, mm -hmm. you know, some things were just taken away yeah. from the children. They were taken away from all of us, mm -hmm. you know, and some persons have not yet learned how to cope with it and how to yeah. come back uh, or adjust themselves, mm -hmm. adapt to the new mm -hmm. environment now because things are not going to be the same yeah. as it was before, mm -hmm. you know. So what would be a recommendation in terms of for children and adolescents in terms of men mental health conditions? How to deal with it? I think first of all, we need to understand that um, as adults, that COVID didn't only affect us. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's, true. Yeah. it's true. Yeah, it's true. It affected the young ones as well. Yep. Sometimes if you get, hey, I'm the one paying the bills, you don't have to worry about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. You understand? But it, it affected mm -hmm. them as well. So they will need the support, they will, they will need the counseling. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You understand? They will need support and counseling. Mm -hmm. You understand? They will need to be referred. Um, to help them with that with that displacement mm -hmm. at the end of the day. In terms of in terms of of, of the church I know we'll have activities mm -hmm. yeah. understand, to, to help them cope and so forth. Mm -hmm. And of course during COVID of course we we'll, as a church we we'll try to facilitate yeah yeah mm -hmm. and still try to facilitate the children and, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but yeah in terms of the mental health issues they will need some form of counseling. Yeah if you if you recognize that that behavior is still persisting, you need you need to get get support from a from, from a professional. Okay. But even with that too, um the data that parents is also very vital as well. Mm -hmm. Um parents need certain um skills to deliver yeah. um children like that. So for example, something of that sort, um you can do things such as um there is this activity, um well this thing called trauma-informed care. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've heard of trauma-informed care. Okay. Um, I remember when I did my um, internship at the Division of Human Services, um, we had some parents in the foster care um, program who actually dealt with children with mental health issues, mm -hmm. you know, because children came from, in, um, you know, trauma environments and whatnot, and you find um, their behaviors will mm -hmm. becoming something that parents could not um, handle at right. that point in time. Okay. Now, you have to teach parents how to understand that type of behavior, that children are just not 
acting they're not acting just to mm -hmm. you know something there's an underlying yes issue. there's an underlying issue there's something that is causing them to act like that so if you have um you know parenting skills program or you know you have um whether it is seminars or even um you know it, you incorporate talks like this with mm -hmm. parents really you give them yes you give them um you educate them Mm -hmm. on mental health um issues and you you give them you know coping mechanisms to help the children so yeah. they themselves the parents when they're at home with the kids they can actually sit and you know talk with them and you know help understand what exactly is going on yeah. with them how to, to analyze certain things with the children they can also learn probing skills as well you mm -hmm. know not just lashing after the children as well um and even with the kids as well um Parents' mental is also very, very important yes. because you find sometimes when the children do suffer from mental health issues, the parents take on that internally and it can actually affect them in a negative way as well. Okay. So you also have to look at whatever surrounding is around the child, mm -hmm. you have to cater to that as well. So that surrounding can be the stuff you know the teachers the parents because teachers can actually teachers actually get very stressed out with children mm -hmm. especially when they have those those type of behaviors um some teachers they they know that children are going through certain things at home or they have behavioral problems because of traumatic experiences but sometimes they don't have the necessary skills to cope with that so if you put um parenting skills programs in place or you put um educational programs in place for both teachers and schools and even the community as well that can actually help the children likewise so it doesn't necessarily have to take a professional or even you as a pastor to come in and intervene mm -hmm. when they have the necessary skills and knowledge to do so they can do that as well okay and you'll be able to clearly express yes to the individual okay that's that's what he's going mm -hmm. through that's mm -hmm. what he's going through mm -hmm. and so forth yeah Okay, I want to ask two more questions before you know. Um, one one of it is what role can social workers play in promoting mental health awareness and support within the church, and how can the church effectively partner with social workers to address mental health challenges in the community? <laughs> um, what role do social workers play? Um. So as social workers, um, social work is a profession that is a, a helping profession. Um, what we do is we cater to the needs of the marginalized people in society. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have the children, you have persons who don't necessarily have um, sufficient income resources. or resources. So we try as much as possible to intervene how we can. Now, um, if the church is able to work with social workers in that aspect, so for example, apostle, somebody would come to you with, um, let's say, they have financial issues and this is causing them to be depressed or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You, in that state, you can actually liaise with a social worker like myself or Bradley or even you know anyone from any of the social agencies that we have okay. here in St. Lucia, and you can actually refer that individual to these mm -hmm. um, social agencies. There are social agencies such as, um, let's say, places like SSBA who actually keep us through like housing assistance, mm -hmm. employment assistance, mm -hmm. social assistance. Um, there's also the Division of Human Services who also keep us to, um, you know, children who have been neglected, abused, or whatnot. Um, there's also um, the Women's Support Center, likewise, um, mm -hmm. which caters to the needs of women who have been battered and, and um, abused or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And there are other social agencies in St. Michelle who cater to different needs of individuals. Now, we as social workers, what we do is when you are able to refer a client to us, we find the necessary, necessary resources that the client needs um, because we cater to the client's entire environment. Okay. So let's say a client is going through, this client wants... Um, financial support or you know we look at what is preventing the client from getting that financial assistance yeah. mm -hmm. those challenges in that state so we look at the environment um in regards to the church the family friends that entire support system and what environment is influencing that because at the end of the day it makes no sense to help somebody deal with one specific issue to have them continue to deal with that you know, you want to you want to allow somebody to be self determined. Um, one of the things that we as social workers we do not um, do is to allow persons to be dependent on us solely. Okay. You know, you have to allow persons to be more self confident and more self dependent. 
on themselves. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to take myself or Bradley or even you to help an individual. But you know, you you probe this individual. Like, is there anything that you okay? You you have financial issues, which is causing you to have depression or anxiety. Is there any Strength. any strengths that you have strength, yeah. um you know sometimes there are persons who actually are very good at you know different things such as craft or, or whatnot um look now we have um they're encouraging solutions to actually be very um independent in regards to things like entrepreneurship yeah. um which is also another source of income as mm -hmm. well um and i can tell you for a fact because um just like the children during covid um i also lost my job as well and i also had <clears throat> ue bills to pay likewise mm -hmm. and i felt into really really deep depression and i also can tell you <laughs> i also can tell you i felt like i was losing my mind because everything was and I remember sitting down and, and analyzing what, what was next for me because I needed to gain some sort of income. So here was a puzzle in the encouraging and counseling aspect of things, but I had to figure out what it is that I had to do. And I went into an entrepreneurship. I had to find some sort of survival. Right, right. And that is very important where social workers are concerned. If the church works alongside social workers, what we do is we share our resources. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we give you the specific knowledge and skills and we also educate you as well on how to do with persons who go through those different type, types okay. of um situations so it's sort of uh how would i say it i don't want to say a circle um but it, it you know it's something that is we sharing knowledge we sharing skills we sharing you know techniques we sharing so right it's mutual the support. mutual support and you actually get to build rapport with um social workers as well mm -hmm. um you know like bradley was saying this is a very very good avenue for conversations like that but it can also extend towards persons in the church mm -hmm. you know you can have um you know seminars or whatnot to mm -hmm. to actually allow persons in the church to gain knowledge and support in regards yeah, to definitely. mental health issues and even the children as well we can incorporate the children in regards to that the young people so they can ask questions you know find out because I can definitely tell you there are some there are a lot of young people and also children who actually deal with those issues and sometimes they don't feel like if i go to tell my parents what i'm going for that they would understand mm -hmm. so if you find um that the children are you know in a church atmosphere in a church environment it you build on that capacity from now because the children are our future yes, yes. so yeah. you have yeah. to deal with with that aspect now um, so that when you know they get older and the bible says you train a child in the way that he should go and when he gets old he shall not depart from it mm -hmm. so if you train a child from now you know moving forward in the generation to come this is something that can be pushed pushed on because i can definitely tell you the the um culture that we have now it's stigmatizing mental health issues now, if we have a culture that is something that is, I think I think they get in there because they I think get, yeah, now, slowly. in terms of the younger generation, mm -hmm. the 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 more pro um, healthy lifestyle yeah. and so forth. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. I think now we've reached a place where mm -hmm. we speak a lot more, yeah. more yeah. often. More yeah. often, you understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's it's, it's getting it's, it's getting, getting there. It's yeah. getting there. It's it's better than it was. Better than it better was, than than was before, especially yeah. among among younger folks. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the stigma is still there. Still there. there. Yeah. And the thing is, it's generational as well. Like like Bradley said, um, if one person or two people in the family, that means that you're you're predisposed as mm -hmm. well. Predisposed. Now, generation breaking those generational curses of also are something on a whole other level yeah <laughs> yep. so that is something in itself but i believe and i've always said that spiritual spiritual aspect of things as well as what it is that we are learning on a professional level it can all it can be incorporated yeah, it, can. Mm -hmm. it can be incorporated yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be that we cast each mm -hmm. other aside mm -hmm. we work together mm -hmm. we find common ground and we we are able to deal with those situations when when they come up and we're able to help these individuals so this yeah. is why I always connectivity collaboration these things are very very but yeah. i think it's really a, most of most of what we we in terms of self-care mm -hmm. what we, we have, try to educate persons mm -hmm. about it's it's basically yeah 
biblical as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Very <laughs> definitely. Biblical. Yeah, my son is biblical. I, I think it's not anything for it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a matter of um, you know, the the church understanding its role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And likewise the secular because we deal with the spiritual, but also the exactly, secular yeah. is important. And I and I think mm -hmm. that they also can be an integration of, of, of both. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people a lot of conditions are spiritual. There are yeah. a lot of spiritual conditions. Mm -hmm. And we are taught how to deal with spiritual conditions. Yeah. While as uh you maybe have been taught how to medicate yeah. problems, how yeah. to identify, yeah. you know, and I believe that there are conditions mm -hmm. that are from a humanistic perspective and not from a spiritual perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What 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 I mean by that is not every condition is spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, Pastor, um, for me personally, all of these conditions, you remember, like like we already know, is as a result of sin. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah basically, long, the long and short, the yeah. long and short of it. Yes, yeah. the, the long and short of it. Because I have dealt with person, I have dealt with, condi with conditions that are, that was spiritual, mm -hmm. and I've seen persons get the deliverance, mm -hmm. and I've dealt with with conditions that are natural, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. I've had to not take the person or persons through deliverance, yeah. but take them through a counseling yeah. session. Yeah. You know, because because everything is not is not a demon, mm -hmm. and so one has to recognize when something is not a demon, yeah. and when a person may not need deliverance, but a person may just need counseling, counseling. Yeah. and so there must be that recognition. And so, my my question my question now. And this is the last question. Uh, how can mental health education and awareness be integrated into the church programs or into church programs and activities to support individuals and families affected by mental health challenges? I think I think we I, I think we did we did <laughs> touch on it a little we did touch on it a little. I think but it has I, to be. Let's, let's go just a little mm -hmm. further because mm -hmm. I, I we did touch on it. But I think for persons who may just have come on, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's something that has to be, um, like we did say, you incorporate it in the sermons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you use biblical perspective, you use passages of scripture, um, and then you, you or, know, you. Or, or segment. Or during segment, a, yeah. During service. During service, yeah. Like a health segment, mm -hmm. a mental health mm -hmm. segment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. So if we if if we are to let's say um we need we need assistance from the social workers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Are you okay? And for example, let's say we need some seminars or we need some kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, definitely. awesome. So I think there, there are a lot of other persons, other or other professionals in terms of counselors, mm -hmm. social workers. Mm -hmm. you know, that would be willing that would be to willing to mm -hmm. provide yeah. that okay. Service. Well, well, awesome. Well, awesome. You know, I, I just want to give you a time for any any last words. I know we've been in. and and this really was just an introduction, mm -hmm. and I look forward to having you all here again, where we can really just go into some questions, mm -hmm. and we have a, a, a solid discussion on that. But today was just an introduction. What I wanted the people to know is that this is what we are doing, mm -hmm. and there is help available. You know, we may not be able to answer all of the questions here and now, mm -hmm. but again, because the services are available, they can find out, they can find mm -hmm. uh, the necessary help that they need. Mm -hmm. So let me get any last words from you and last words from you, Leah, I'll take. So, um, yes, so folks, remember, <laughs> mental health is our ability to bounce back, to be resilient in the face of adversity yes, and stress. Um, mental health is something that we as a society really need to take serious. Um, it's real, it's a, it's a common thing, especially in our society now. I, I, I plan on later on trying to do a study campaign. Um, the level of met mental health conditions from before in Central mm -hmm. as opposed to now. now. Yeah. I don't really understand. I, I, I don't know for some reason mm -hmm. would it be because of our fast paced society mm -hmm. or I don't know, we able to do so much at at, at one point mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how what 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 affect 
that it it has on the brain, mm -hmm. but it's something that we need to prioritize it serious. You understand? And remember, if if you have a family member, mm -hmm. if you have a history, if you have a family mm -hmm. history of mental mm -hmm. illness, you have a you you stand a you stand a chance. Mm -hmm. You stand a you stand a chance of developing a, a mental condition. That doesn't mean that 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 doesn't mean that you are doomed. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that you now can mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. to prevent that in terms of self care, mm -hmm. in terms of eating mm -hmm. eating right, mm -hmm. exercising. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we, we have the we have the information at, at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I mean, as the church, we of course we play a vital role in terms of educating individuals. You understand? Educating the public. And again, we have a in terms of the church, we have a tool. Yeah. A very very important tool in terms of that social support. Mm -hmm. You understand? In terms of being able to come to come to church on a, on a, on a Sunday and just let everything go give give every, everything, everything to God are you you see this is how are you doing how's your week yeah, yeah. Are you doing? and yeah. we, we have to be genuine mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. be genuine and we have to be our brothers people we have to be our brothers Absol people. absolutely and folks we are we have to be mindful of the stigma yeah. when it comes to mental health yeah we need to take some time yeah. and educate ourselves because yeah. yeah. things will support mental health conditions they are individuals too Father, brother, mm -hmm. you understand? They, they are individuals. That the mental health condition doesn't define them. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? The same way, um, if someone with cancer or diabetes, hey, he's a diabetic. Oh, look, look, look yeah. a, a cancer patient. Yeah. No, it's an individual. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? So we have to be mindful in terms of how we treat all of this. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because we don't know what they're going through. And again, focus recognize the science mm -hmm. and the resources are available mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. the national mental wellness center if you have access to a counselor mm -hmm. reach out you reach out to pastor mason or sister leo mm -hmm. they understand they they will be able to at least refer you to the necessary mm -hmm. individuals as well mm -hmm. all right right um what i like everybody to know is that um what we've mentioned here is mental health really is an issue that is is a factor to you know not only adults but also children as well um adolescents and this is something that we as a church um and as a general society need to understand um we need to move away from the stigma that when we hear mental health that we automatically feel like somebody is going mad or somebody is going crazy mm -hmm. um the information is there um and like bradley mentioned um in you know in your spare time you know you can do your research your own little research you know to educate yourself um and i'm i, I know for a fact that um apostle will definitely you know mention some of the things that we have mentioned here as well um let's be observant of um people who are around us and notice the changes um you know let's be our brother's keeper um, realize the signs, you know, um, especially if you realize somebody is, is somebody who's not used to doing something, you see them acting a, a different way. Let's look at the, the behavior of that individual. Um, let's support each other. Remember family support, church support is also very, very mm -hmm. important as well. Um, first point of engagement is also very important because the church is supposed to be, a an environment of love and support and comfort you know instead of us judging individuals let's be there for them um you know recognize the signs like we did mention and also um remember that different things can actually permit mental health issues like we mentioned depression anxiety you know panic attacks recognize that it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you have a mental health disorder. Remember, there is a difference between a mental health disorder and also mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, before it can actually be permitted into a mental health disorder, let's tackle things such as depression, anxiety. Yeah. You know, um, remember the techniques that we, we did mention, you know, exercise, diet, you know, breathing, meditation, and there are other things that persons can incorporate. Um, it's very important to understand that if you believe that even with trying those techniques you feel as if you know it doesn't work out for you you know find 
somebody that you can trust, mm -hmm. somebody that you can call. A person is there, you know, like Bradley mentioned, a counselor, you know, myself and other persons in that aspect who can actually help. Um, but what I want to tell people is that the resources are there, the services are there. Um, sometimes we have to understand and we have to you know we have to say that we're not okay and don't necessarily have to feel like we have to put on this huge coat or man up like persons would say it's important to say that you're not okay and realize that you do need the help um and also understand that the church is also a very very vital place and even us as as christians as we we mentioned um today that there are there are persons in the bible who actually had mental health issues and um if you go further to passages of scriptures as well there are actually details that are provided that shows you where individuals who have dealt with these issues what mm -hmm. what they've said and um there's also passages of scripture that can actually um cater to healing um and there are different things that you can do to incorporate um self-care you know let's take some time out to analyze ourselves and you know realize our surroundings and remember um you know to to find persons that you can speak to right. and you know support and support support we mentioned a lot of things today we, we mentioned support we mentioned being observant we mentioned um education um we also mentioned family as well we mentioned the church these things are very very vital to deal with um issues such as um mental health and also the impact that it has on in us as a society awesome again i'd say thanks you know to mr Joseph, Bobby Joseph, and I'm thankful to Leah Gilbert. You know, I mean, this tonight was really good. And one of the things that we've learned, and I would say to you, get help. If there's a need for you to find help, find that help. Do not allow pride. Mm -hmm to stop you or to prevent you from getting the help that you need. There is available resources. There are places that are available for you to get help. There are counselors that are available for you to get help. The church or the churches are available for you to get help. And don't say that you're not gonna get help and you'd rather stay with your condition. <laughs> that, that, is not a good, that is not a good thing. I believe it's important for us to really do what we have been called to do to fulfill the purpose of god in the earth mm -hmm. and sometimes you can be hindered because of pride sometimes again we can look at a number of things and don't again as we said don't think that mental health is that you're mad you're not mad and you know one of the things we find in fish, <laughs> a lot of men don't like to go to counseling because yep. they figure that they don't have a problem so they won't go, not go to counseling you know, and, and I'm saying to you, mental health does not mean that you're mad. I'm saying this. Uh, we have extreme cases and we have cases that are very mild. And that's why for me, I believe that the church should be a family. I believe the church was designed to be a family, a support system for persons, not a place of judgment, but a place where people can come and be healed, come and be empowered, come and be strengthened, where their lives can be transformed. It should be a place where people's journeys are made easier. So there's the help. The scripture says two cannot walk together except they, they agree. agree. Mm -hmm. You know, the church environment is a place of agreement. And we need people who will stand in agreement with us that will help us through our dilemmas and so today i'm thankful for this for this session here today and if if anything i mean it it, it really brought to light a number of things mm -hmm. you know and i and i think that the people will bless i believe that the people will bless you know one of the things when we have discussions like that you don't always get a big crowd <laughs> you know but nonetheless yeah. the people who came on yeah. They came on because they need it, yeah. because they wanted to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I think that they may be more, uh, they may be able to recognize mm -hmm. uh, certain mm -hmm. issues that persons may be dealing with around them. And so I think it's important because I think also we have equipped them yeah. in, in really finding that help 
and learning how to identify when a person is broken, when a person is wounded, and how to approach that person. So I'm thankful to God for the two of you, and I look forward to having a more in-depth discussion on this. This really was just an introduction. As I said, since it was just an introduction, I really just wanted to talk. We had a few questions that we wanted to ask, but I really just felt the need just to talk, you know, that we can really come to that place where you can also feel comfortable, you know, so that if there's a question that you may have, you can always feel free to send in your question. But I just want to pray for you as we get ready to close. I just want to thank God for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, for your hand, your grace, your strength. Father, anyone out there dealing with any level, any degree of mental health issues or mental disorder, Father, whatsoever the conditions is, wherever it stems from, whatever the root of it may be, whether it's generational or otherwise, Father, I thank you for your hand, your power and your ability to transform lives Father, to adjust and to address mindsets. Uh, I thank you for your ability to effectuate change in the lives of your people. Father, today we lift you up. We lift up your people. Father, as they journey the difficulties of life, Father, sometimes uh, they can become overwhelmed with it. They can become overwhelmed, God, uh, with the loss of a loved one. Father, with the changes around them. But nonetheless, God, whatever the issue, I pray your will. I pray your hand. I pray your grace upon them. I pray, Father, because according to your word, your grace is sufficient. Father, to keep us. And so, Father, today, I pray, God, indeed, that, that their minds will be stayed upon you. For your word says that they whose mind is stayed upon you, that you will keep in perfect peace. And so, Father, we pray, God, for, your, for the perfection of your peace. We pray, God, for your hand upon them. Father, bless them, cover them, touch them. Father, whatever the issues may be, demonic or otherwise, Father, we speak to it. And God, we declare that, God, your people shall have the victory. They shall overcome, oh God, the dilemmas. They shall overcome the troubles, the struggles, the trials. Father, according to your word, you said this is the victory. Father, and the victory is our faith, our faith. Faith, God gives us the ability to overcome every obstacle. And so, Father, today, touch them, cover them, strengthen them. Father, touch, oh God, Father Bradley, and touch, oh God, Leah. Father, let your hand be upon them. Let your grace be upon them. Father, I pray, God, for the success in everything that they do, Father, this day and this hour. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. I want to say thank you again. This has been Guam Conversations. And again, we appreciate it when we are thankful for Bradley Joseph and also Leah Twyla Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank God for you and God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in. We are here tomorrow night for our prayer deliverance and breakthrough. Again, we thank God for you. God bless you and have a really wonderful night in Jesus' name. Thank you.